Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from executeautomation.com and welcome to part 26 of our PDD video series. And in this video, we're going to talk about handling multiple assert in Selenium with assert.multiple method of NUnit 3.6. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 25 since this part is going to have some code from that part. Alright, so let's get started. NUnit 3.6 well, NUnit 3.6 released by Jan 9th, 2017 and has a number of notable improvement and features, something like this. And Jan 9th, 2017 is just three days before the day I'm recording this video. So it is pretty new and this concept itself is pretty new and it's currently not available anywhere out in the web. So I guess this is the first video on the feature which we're going to talk about. All right, so some of the notable feature released along with the in unit 3.6 is the .NET standard 1.6 supported and add support for multiple assert blocks added the param option to any unit light theories now support null enum blah 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 so there are so many features the one which we are going to talk about is the bold one add support for multiple assert blocks that's what we're going to talk about well assert.multiple where is this really useful so let's consider a scenario something like this Let's say we have to test multiple properties of an UI element in Selenium. And this is something which happens many times when we start working with Selenium and we have to assert different properties of a same test case at the same time within a simple single step definition. So we always try to write a if condition by trying to mix and match many different assertions within a same step definition or we put that assert in different step definitions to verify single case with different properties at the same time. So we do something like this. Assert dot that element dot text is equal to exit automation selenium test. So we're just verifying if the, ele the elements text is exit automation selenium test. And also we verify that it is not null. Right? So if these are the two different properties that I want to verify at the same time, in any test framework, if the first assert fails for some reason, let's say it's not meeting the condition, it is not equal to exit automation selenium test, then the second assertion will not even going to take place and the whole test will fail, right? And that's what is really happening. So if there are five or six different assert within the same method, and if the first assert fails, then other four are not really going to work, right? Let's say if the third assert fails, the first three asserts will be executed, but the last two will not be executed. So this is the current scenario. So how to handle this situation? We do some custom code to overcome this problem, right? Well, yes, but from NUnit 3.6, there is a method, something called as multiple. This is really, really cool. So now the code is going to look something like this. It is going to have a assert.multiple method with a delegate and you can specify different asserts within that particular method code block. You can see that I have a assert dot that this code block and assert dot that another assertion within same code block. So what does it does? It runs all the assertions. Even if the first assert fails, the first one, the equal to, if it fails, the second assertions take place and the failures are reported at the end of the code blocks. That is the real beauty of this method. And this is some of the most important requested feature on NUnit which everybody is looking for. And this is something NUnit has inspired from the MB unit framework and it is actually the feature which has been carried forward from that MB unit into NUnit. So there are other benefits of assert.multiple method like the assert.multiple block may contain any arbitrary code, just not the assert. And the multiple assert block may be nested. So failure is not reported until the outermost block exists. That's what we discussed in our previous slide. And if the code in the block calls a method, that method may also contain multiple assert blocks, which is really cool. And the test will be terminated immediately if any exception is thrown that is not handled. An unexpected exception is often an indication that the test itself is in error, so it must be terminated, which is really making sense. 
So if the exception occurs after one or more assertion failures have been recorded, those failures will be reported along with the terminating exception itself. So these are some of the real benefits of multiple method. And the assert.fail is handled just as like any other assert.failure methods, but the message and the stack trace are recorded and this will keep on continuing until the end of the block. That is the real beauty of it. An error is reported if any of the following are used inside a multiple assert block, something like the assert.pass, ignore, inconclusive, and that, right? So let's see this whole theory in action and understand how things work. So for that, I'm gonna to flip to Visual Studio. So this is the same project which we were talking so far in our Exit Automation channel from here, github.exitautomation.com. And here you can see that we have a repo called Selenium Parallel Sample. So I just took the same code in here from this particular repo and this is the code, right? So what I'm going to do this time is I'm actually going to verify the assert multiple. But before working with the assert multiple, we need to do two things. The first thing is we need to update the end unit to 3.6. So far in our project, we have not updated the end unit version to 3.6. And even if it is, we cannot because it is released just for two days. So I'm going to go to the manage new get package. And if I go to the update this time, you can see that the end unit is currently pointing to 3.41 and I'm going to take the latest table 3.6 version. So I'm going to hit update. So it's going to update the latest version for me and I'm going to close it. So right now my latest end unit version is 3.6. So let's go in here for the step definition of login steps. So there is something called as assert that, right? This particular method. Let's say if I have one more assert that method for this particular step definition, and let's say I'm just going to modify this particular code. Is null. I'm just making it explicitly to fail. And if I hit a breakpoint in here, and now if I try to debug this particular selector test, what really happens is you know what is really going to happen. It is going to come to this particular block after executing all the step definitions on the top. And once it encounters the wrong assertion that we're going to perform, it's going to throw us an exception and the test will fail, right? So let's see what's really going to happen. It seems like the exit automation demo site is not really working. Hmm, it's working. So let me try again. And now it's going to take me to the dashboard page. All right, that's the user form page. And now you can see that we are in the assert.dat, so this method. So this is not really going to be null because the text is actually here and we are verifying whether it is null. So now the test actually should fail. So if I do a step over, you can see that we are getting an exception here and it says the header text not found with this additional information and the expected is null, but the actual has a value in here, which makes complete sense, right? So even if you run the test, even without debugging it, it is not going to work out. So how to handle this kind of situation? So right now we are not verifying this particular asset even if it is correct, right? So in order to overcome this problem and we like me in Selenium have this kind of problem many times because right now see we have to verify that the text is not null and we have to verify what is the uh, text value and also we can verify many other properties here like text dot displayed is not false and if we want to verify some other attributes of that particular UI element, we can also do that as well. But in order to execute all the assert methods, we are going to use our assert.multiple method this time. Let's see what's really gonna happen. So now I'm gonna keep these both right here and I'm just gonna change the code a little bit. I'm gonna call this assert dot, there is something called as multiple method this time. So I'm gonna call that and it is gonna accept a delegate so I'm going to create a code block for this particular delegate. That's it. That's a simple code change. And now if I try to hit a breakpoint in here, and if I try to debug this test, what's basically going to happen is even though if the first assertion fails, oops, even though if the first assertion fails, it is going to run the code block until the end of all the assertions. So let's see. All right, now we are here. I'm going to do a step over. 
you can see that this time it is not even throwing me an exception but it is going to the second assert if the second assert is going to fail it is going to continue to the third assert if it is any right so i'm going to step over again but it is going to say that one or more failure in multiple assert block has happened so i'm going to continue this continue again and now if we come to our test adapter or the result in our test explorer we can see what is the failure happening here it said the header text not found the expected was null but it was this guy so this is how we can work with multiple assertions using our n unit for verifying multiple assertion for a same element of an ui object of selenium as well so this is really a cool feature and it is really, really adding a great value while we start working with a great bigger project. So once again, guys, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.